All right, we're going to jump in and go from Toronto to Quebec City. We're getting an update from the province's education minister. More details on the plan to reopen daycares and primary schools in the province. Let's listen in here to Jean-François Roberge, the education minister. Within this context, I am therefore announcing that for primary school as well as preschool, the length of the 11th of May, there will be a reopening of all establishments within what we call the cold zones, which means outside of the CMM, that being the Metropolitan Community of Montreal. If the situation allows it, later on, on the Tuesday, 19th of May, preschool and primary schools will be able to also open in the MCM. As of the 19th of May, therefore, all of our preschool and primary schools would be opened. For high school, those establishments will have to remain closed, which does not mean that the learning will not continue, but the physical places will be closed to the students. For professional training and general uh, training for adults, there are nuances. For general training, it will remain closed, so the learning will be continued remotely. But for professional training, the recommendations of public health are to allow us to organize occasionally half groups, so half class sizes, to allow those youth that are doing technical learning, where they have to handle things, let's say in welding, where you have to learn it from a theoretical point of view, yes, but you also have to do it physically. So in half classes and in respecting social distancing of two meters. For colleges and universities, Without any surprise, I am announcing to you that our CHS universities will remain closed as physical places, but the learning remote and online will continue. During the first uh, few weeks, there were many challenges, but they were um, they were addressed, and it's going pretty well, and it will continue to this to the end of the semester, as well as for the summer session. This is a prudent return, and I understand that if, despite everything, there are parents and members of the staff who still have concerns, it's normal, and that is why we are announcing this two weeks ahead of time, and it's important to mention it. It's two, even three weeks ahead of time we are announcing something, and we therefore have the time to see things. We have the time to be able to really take these recommendations for public health and logistically to organize school life in this new way. And the recommendations are to the effect that there has to be a social distancing of two meters, of course, as well as having a maximum number of students per class that will be of 15 in our preschools and primary schools. And of course, uh, anybody who has a specific medical condition or who are over 60 years of age will not be able to, well, they could come back, but uh, it is really highly recommended to the staff that are 60 and over or who have a, an underlying medical condition to not come back to work on the premises. They can work from home, and those students that have a medical condition that is uh, that, that also is an impediment are asked not to come back to, cl to class. And if anybody has any symptoms, of course, they must remain at home for a minimum of 14 days. Of course, there will also be very strict sanitary measures with more cleaning of the surfaces, etc., and sanitary measures followed within the schools. The Premier often says it. It is a measure that is voluntary, that going back to the preschool and primary schools. But I still wish to insist upon the fact that it would really be favorable that those students who have difficulties learning and who perhaps uh, were close to failing or who have specific needs do go back to school if it is possible for them to do so, if they don't have any health problems. And we wish for teachers in the next few days to contact those families of those students who have difficulties in school to explain to them how it will happen to entice those young people to go back to class. That return to school for even just five or six weeks can make a big difference in the school life of those people. They will be given educational support that is improved. And here I'm talking about those who will also be staying at home, whether it be high school, of course, or preschool. Of course, we'll be keeping uh, the, the our, our portal, our educational portal open, and the weekly kits that are sent every week will continue, the calls to students will continue being made, the partnership with Télé Québec will continue, but I have four good news to announce. 
First, as of the 4th of May, all of the school staff will have access to our educative services daycare centers, which means that everybody in the health network will have the best conditions to be able to offer full and entire work presence. Secondly, as of this week, upon invitation, parents, please listen, upon invitation from the schools, you will be able to go get your school material and also you will be able to borrow tools, technological tools, so pads and uh, computers. We also have an agreement with TELUS and Apple that has allowed us to put aside over 15,000 tablets that are linked to an LTE cellular network to be able to loan them to those who don't have the technological tools, as well as sending in the homes those connected tools for homes where there is still no internet, no Wi-Fi. Well, we will be breaking that gap and that shortfall that could dig itself by supplying not only tools, but connected tools. And finally, we have a great agreement with our remote universities, TELUC, which as of the 4th of May will be offering, and that free of cost since it is a ministry that is paying for it, but freely for the entire school network, preschool, uh, college and, co uh, and uh, high school, training on remote teaching, so 20 hours university level training that will be offered to all the teachers of Quebec. So with these four measures, it is clear that we'll be able to do even more and even better for those who will be having a uh, remote end of their year. That being said, of course, there are many challenges that we'll be faced with with the reopening, even though it, it is going to be slow, gradual, and voluntary, even if the first children who come back to school will come back in two or three weeks. There is still a logistical challenge to be able to coordinate all of that in the field. And that is why these two upcoming weeks will be very useful for us together to establish dialogues and guidelines that will ease everything, as well as to allow very the very competent people that we have in our schools and our daycare centers to be able to prepare everything and coordinate school transportation, prepare the welcoming of the students. And that is why I must stress with the families, I'm asking parents to let us know, or let the school know at least a week ahead of time before sending their child to the school, whether it be preschool or um, primary school. Very important to let the school know a week ahead of time so that we can prepare ourselves to offer quality service to the students and that we be able to prepare ourselves to welcome while respecting the recommendations of public health with social distancing and a maximum of 15 people. I would like to end by saying that I trust that everything will be done well. Yes, there are challenges, but we're giving ourselves the time to be able to rise up to the challenge. And in our chains in Quebec, we have all the skills necessary to be able to welcome those students and to be able to give that educational support to 